let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the gospel. We ask you, God, to continue to give us your knowledge and wisdom, the right understanding of your word, and strengthen us, O oh Lord God, for your purpose. Continue, Lord, to find the enemy away from us, and continue, Lord God, to use us for your kingdom. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some of us, brothers and sisters in Christ, who attended the AEAM, the Episcopal Asian Missioner uh, Asian Ministry at, uh, at California, uh, San Francisco, may share some reflection or reports about this. One thing that I heard from the keynote address during that time, he said. The mistake of the church started off at the Melvian Bridge. And this is about, if we know the history, this is about a king, uh, Constantine, the Emperor Constantine saw in his vision in that Melvian Bridge. It says, the word says, by this sign you will conquer. The sign of the cross. By this sign you will conquer. And that's why when he arrived to that uh, center of Roman uh, imperialism, he looked for that group who carried that sign of the cross. Clear enough, brothers and sisters in Christ, Emperor Constance, Constantine made that sign of the cross as his symbol to conquer territory. So, why I said, uh, why that guy said a mistake? By that time, then the persecuted church, the persecuted apostles and disciples and Christians, during that time or after that time, they became persecutor by wolves. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Christ wanted to spread Christianity, as what we hear from the Gospel. He wanted to spread Christianity in a very humble manner. Workers for the harvest, he said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Workers for the harvest, mga manggagawa sa upasan, he said, he said to them, you are the workers of this harvest. Go, I am sending you out. I am sending you out like wolves among, uh, like lambs among wolves. And worst to that is, he said, do not bring anything. Purse, bags, sandals. Do not bring those things. Jesus was like saying to them and also to us, we should learn from this word to his disciples, to the 70 people that he sent ahead of him. He seems saying, rely, don't bring anything, rely on the generosity of those generous people who were there, those who will believe you, those who who will accept you, those who, uh, who receive your teachings and your preachings, rely on them, feel their kindness, give them the opportunity to show their heart for you, you know, feel their hospitality, depends on how these people welcome you. It seems that Jesus Christ was saying, trust, act by faith, experience the goodness of whoever that can give you, that who will give you those good things that you need. Do not bring anything. Trust on their generosity. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the church of God spread expanded, multiplied because 
of the generosity of the believers. I like to recognize again uh, our brother Mani, uh, the family of Mani. They came from uh, San Jose and they moved here. Now, because of that love, because of that uh, generosity, you know, I'm willing to sacrifice for the church or welcome anybody for the church. So we don't have any problem to where to, where to stay. So Father Fred sent priest, sent me here to come here. Anyway, don't, don't worry about your, where, you, where to stay. They're there. They will welcome you. They will open the door for you. They will feed you. And that's what happened. Right? Thank you so much. But, but what I'm saying is that the, the Christ, Christianity, the church, will spread, will spread, will uh, the, the church will be planted in this town. The Holy Child was planted because of that generosity, because of that kindness. And so, Jesus continued to say, do not insult your host, if we read the gospel. Now I put it in a very short word. Do not insult your host. Do not, do not insult those who will come to you. Do not move from one place to another. Do not move from one house to another house. Stay in that house. The house of those who receive you. Stay in there. Appreciate all things that is going, that they, they will give you. Eat whatever they serve you. Huwag ka nang maghanap. Eat those uh, food, whatever food that they will serve you. It seems that Jesus Christ also, brothers and sisters in Christ, is saying, forget about food legalism or the, uh, you know, the dietary uh, legalism. You cannot eat this, you cannot eat pork, you cannot, what, you know. Forget about those. Eat whatever they serve you. Eat whatever food they serve. Drink whatever they give you. Beyond dietary uh, strictness. So, that's what he said. And we hear last Sunday, brothers and sisters in Christ, if we, if we look at the gospel today and the last Sunday, Jesus said to the one who cannot follow him at the moment, he said, because I need to go back, I need to bury my father. I cannot follow you. I wanted to follow you, but I cannot do that now because I had to go back to bury my father. And Jesus said, let the dead bury their, their own dead. But you go, or you follow me. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Now, brothers and sisters, again, here's my favorite subject, kingdom of God, because but we always uh, hear that from me, and it doesn't mean that because you always hear that from me, it's not good sermon anymore. But, you know, the primacy of the kingdom of God should be primacy in our thinking should be the, the primary thing in our understanding and it should not be buried by another thing. So the, again, the gospel tells that heal the sick. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. If they do not like it, so be it. Yet be sure of this. The kingdom of God is near. Brothers and sisters in Christ again, we should, we should be uh, thankful for the, the emphatic word. The primacy of Jesus Christ is about the kingdom of God. It should be the primary thing in our understanding. John Wimber, you know, as we, as we know, we have song, we have one favorite song. Uh, da, 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 oh, let the sun, let it fall. Let the spirit song uh, composed by John Wember. 
and in his book he said that the only things that Jesus Christ tells his disciples to go and preach is the kingdom of God. You cannot find anything. You go and preach it. Go and tell this. Go. Say the message about the kingdom of God. And that's all. That's the only thing that he said to his disciples. And I think John Wimber was right. And also, uh, oh, he knows about these things. If we read the Acts of the Apostles, the last verse, the last of the Acts of the Apostles, it tells about Paul spent two years teaching about the kingdom of God. The, the Acts of the Apostles ends uh, in that verse. Now we may ask, what do you mean by near? Kingdom of God is near. What do you mean by near? You may ask. Brothers and sisters in Christ, these 70 messengers, or this in, in NIV, it's just 72. But uh, we should not dwell on that, you know. 70 or 72 messengers, Jesus sent them as his advance party. Go there, you know, don't bring anything. Uh, go to that house, whoever will come to you. But tell them this the kingdom of God is near. If they don't believe you, get out from, from that house, say to that, to the, you know, in the street, you know, things. But, and he said, yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is near. So, the essence of what he said is that Jesus is the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters in Christ. When, when we recall John the Baptist's preaching, he said that repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's a way of saying repent for the for Jesus Christ is near, is at hand. He's, he's here. Repent. So he said Jesus Christ said go my advance party tell them the kingdom of God is near. I am near. I am I'm coming. So Jesus Christ is the kingdom of God. And, you know, we should be thankful for that simple message that, ah, we can say that the only thing that we should have is Jesus Christ. And then we are in the kingdom of God. He is the kingdom of God. We should build a relationship with Him. And Peter, uh, allow me to say about the Galatians, the second reading, Galatians 6, 7, 16. Uh, it talks about, you know, it's one, one member or one friend, he said, why do you read Galatians? Are you from Galatia? That leader is for the Galatian people, for the, Gal for, for the people in Galatia. Why do you spend time reading that? That's not for you. Uh, you are in Las Vegas. This is not Galatia. And, it's, uh, and of course, we know that, uh, you know, that, that this letter is for the Galatian people. But we should learn from that letter. And there is no other sources that we can grab to learn, but those letter to the Galatians. So from that letter to the Galatians, we grab it and learn from that. From that. And Paul said, do not dis be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. And actually, we don't. I don't have to to elaborate this. It's very simple. You know, if you. Maybe we say if we take marijuana today, you will re you end up becoming addicted to the uh, uh, what is that? The, 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 the more, more powerful thing that destroys your life, right? If you allow yourself to enjoy this kind of thing, small thing, but watch out because you end up addicted to that thing. 
and it will destroy you. you know. Some people started gambling, you know, like this, but because he's not careful, he ended up uh, gambling, including his house. He, he, you know, he he built his house, he, you know, and it destroys the whole family. It destroys his future. So that's what. Saint Paul was saying here, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you ignore one thing here that is important, next time you know you become so enemy, antagonist to that. If you ignore God this time, next time you know, for maybe for a long time, or maybe for just month, you become antagonist to God's call. Because you don't only say that I don't go there, I don't believe in that. You will say, I don't believe on that thing, God, because this is why, you know, I don't. It, you become a preacher against God. You become a preacher on things that is offensive to the Lord. The same thing, brothers and sisters in Christ, submit to the call of the Bible to dwell on things which is of God. Eat what is evil, clean what is good, and nurture that things of spirit. The one who sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. If we do things according to the Holy Spirit, according to God's uh, command, according to God's uh, encouragement, or God's uh, leading we will end up living in God's uh, in eternal life you know what is eternal life if we ask Jesus Christ the eter eternal life is this those who know Jesus Christ and the God who sent him God knows Jesus Christ see kingdom of God eternal life it's it boils down to who is Jesus Christ in you? Who is Jesus? What is your relationship with the Lord? And brothers and sisters in Christ also, this is one important thing that we should we should not stop enjoying the the uh, relationship with the Holy Spirit. We should have something to do for that. You know, in, in, in verse 10 it says, therefore. As we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So you are Christian, yes. You are born again, it says here. What counts is new creation. You are. You are new creation. And do not enjoy, do not stop having this name, new creation, and born again. But, as we have opportunity, every time that we can do, we have opportunity to do good to other people. Let us do good to all people. Let us do good. You let, uh, position yourself to do these things. Do good to all people. Say, it's not enough that you have faith. You have, you have, uh, you should have work. You should have tangible, uh, visible thing according to what you believe, right? With the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we always ask God to encourage us, to give us, to open our mind, to give us strength. Not for yourself, but to perform the work that Jesus Christ has given us to do. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand and affirm our faith in the word.